Burning Shores is just a couple of weeks away, and I'm just as excited as you guys to dive back into a new adventure with Aloy in the Forbidden West. When we learned it costs only $20, I was a little nervous we might not be seeing much new content, but we haven't even gotten a launch trailer yet and it's shaping up to be something really cool. The pre-order trailer basically confirmed we'll be getting new weapons, as you can get the exclusive Black Tide Sharpshot bow by pre-ordering. There's no way that's the only new weapon, so I expect at least a couple of new weapons in each of the nine categories. The trailer also showed Aloy where a new outfit dyed with the black tide dye, another pre-order exclusive, so we know there will be new outfits and dyes as well. Now, the outfit itself isn't a pre-order bonus, just the dye, but we've seen this same outfit dyed differently in the reveal trailer, and I think it's pretty safe to say it's Quen inspired. We currently have between 7 and 11 outfits for each of the other tribes, so I'd expect a similar number of Quen outfits. But remember, the Quen aren't native to this continent, so I'm expecting we'll meet at least one more tribe in the Burning Shores, and I have to imagine they'll have their own set of outfits and dyes too. We also recently learned about the new water wing machine, which is basically a sun wing that can dive and swim underwater like a pelican. I was totally blown away when Gorilla tweeted this clip, and if they're willing to share the water wing as a teaser, there must be some really cool stuff they're holding back. Some of it may have to do with a recent PlayStation blog post that dove into some of the more technical aspects of the work that's been done to make clouds more realistic. Beyond being a really impressive visual improvement, the devs repeatedly described the skies as an explorable environment. And at the end, Andrew Schneider, the principal FX artist, teased us by saying he hopes we're not afraid of a little lightning. We got a glimpse of that lightning in the water wing reveal video, and it does look super impressive. But I can't help but wonder if that hint could also be referring to the lightning from a Stormbird Storm Cannon. With so much emphasis on making the skies explorable and the aquatic mobility improvements we're going to get with the water wing, I think it would make a lot of sense if we got some aerial combat mechanics too. We can already use weapons weapons on terrestrial mounts, so being able to use them on our flying friend would be a natural evolution. Maybe we'll even be able to use the Sunwing's plasma blasters to fight stormbirds or other flying machines in the air. Plus, I think being able to fire from above would make a lot of sense when fighting a colossal machine like the Horus. With all this new information, the reveal trailer thumbnail image with Aloy and someone else riding the Sunwing towards the Horus seems like more evidence for aerial combat as well. With all this new content coming, Gorilla recently posted a how to prepare video, but there's a few more more things you should consider before Burning Shores drops on April 19th, like which side quests could be important to complete and taking advantage of the infinite resources glitch before it gets patched. There's also a pretty juicy new detail on Burning Shores that I think Gorilla accidentally let slip, so be sure to stick around to the end for my breakdown on that. Before we get started though, you guys should know that I'm running a giveaway for two pre-order copies of Burning Shores. You can enter using the Gleam link in the description and you'll get three entries by being subscribed to the channel, plus more by following me on other platforms. You'll need to enter an email address so I can contact the winners, who will be announced on April 16th, but you can use a fake name if you want. Remember, I'll never contact you about a giveaway in YouTube comments, but there's a lot of scammers out there who will steal my profile picture and try to trick you, so please don't click on those links. Good luck to everyone who enters. Okay, so because the Burning Shores story takes place after the story of Forbidden West, if you want to play the new content at launch, then you'll need to make sure you've finished all the main quests, including the final one, Singularity. In addition to finishing the main quests, you may also want to consider doing a few particular side quests or doing a New Game Plus playthrough. New Game Plus offers the opportunity to pick up some exclusive new legendary weapons. I covered these in my New Game Plus Legendaries video as well as how I use them in my loadout in my Ultimate Loadout video, both linked below. The New Game Plus Legendaries certainly aren't necessary to have before Burning Shores, but certain ones like the Ear of Downfall Sharpshot Bow and Tears of the Land God Hunter Bow will absolutely be helpful if you have them. If you do decide to do New Game Plus before Burning Shores, remember you need to complete the main story again, and you'll want to consider farming the upgrade resources for weapons like Erevs and the TLG before heading in. I've got a checklist for all those upgrade resources that I show in the New Game Plus Legendaries video. New Game Plus or not, you'll also want to decide which difficulty you want to play on, specifically if the save you're going to use for Burning Shores will be Ultra Hard or not. Remember, once you choose Ultra Hard, you'll be locked on that difficulty for your entire playthrough. The only way to go back to a lower difficulty is to either load an old save or start a new New Game Plus. Regardless of which save you use or what difficulty it's on, I highly recommend you make a manual save once you get everything situated. This will allow you to go back to the point just before starting the DLC in case you decide you want to do something differently. Besides completing the main quests, you'll also want to consider doing some side content before Burning Shores for two reasons. First, leveling up to the max level of 50 will maximize your health bar, and having more health will undoubtedly be more helpful when fighting new challenging machines. Completing quests is the best 
best way to level up, so you'll probably want to do at least a few more in addition to the main missions. And second, some of the most useful gear comes from completing specific side content. Perhaps the most useful weapon locked behind side content is the Sun Scourge Elemental Hunter Bow, as it has the strongest frost and acid arrows in the game, with frost being a particularly strong element and, I suspect, quite useful in a place called the Burning Shores. To get the Sun Scourge, you need to clear the first Forge Rebel Camp, which is only revealed after clearing all five regular Rebel Camps and then talking to Erend at the base. I would also highly recommend picking up a few items from the arena, which will require completing arena challenges to get tokens. If you're having trouble with the arena, I have my video linked below that walks you through how to beat each one of the locked loadout challenges, plus shows a bunch of tips for how to beat the open loadout ones. I'll also link some resources from my friends Mr. Fancy Pants and Wallace and Paulino, both of whom have held or currently hold top rank finishes for all the challenges. As for the specific items you'll want to pick up, I'd highly recommend the Death Seeker Shadow Hunter Bow for its powerful shock arrows. I'd also pick up the Blast Forge Bolt Blaster as it's one of the best weapons for dealing raw damage. If you want to learn more about how to use Bolt Blasters effectively, you can check out my Bolt Blaster Masterclass. The Nora Thunder Warrior outfit is also definitely worth picking up as it's arguably the best outfit for most players. If you don't plan on doing New Game Plus, then you might want the Forge Fall Sharp Shot Bow for its advanced precision arrows. You might also consider picking up the Tanakh Vanquisher outfit for a low health build, which is very strong. I cover how that build works, plus everything else you need to know about outfits and weaves in my Outfit and Weave Guide. Stealth players will want to pick up the Utaru Winter Weave from Thornmarsh, and you might also want to grab the Tanakh Tactician while you're there, as I have a sneaking suspicion that the Machine Master Override playstyle will be enhanced in the DLC. Thornmarsh is also where you find the Elite Ropecaster, which will certainly be helpful for troublesome machines, so I definitely pick that up. Just remember to get ropes to attach through armor plates, you need to at least partially draw a rope caster. You can't just tap fire it like in Zero Dawn. You'll also probably want to pick up the Delta Sharp Shot Bow in Thornmarsh, which has some of the best strike through precision arrows, an ammo that's particularly useful for dealing with rebels. Its advanced precision arrows are almost as strong as the Forge Falls, so it's great for dealing damage to machines too. Now, if you choose not to pick up the Death Seeker Shadow from the arena, then consider doing the Need to Know quest with Talana to get the Lightning Hunter Bow so you have access to shock arrows. Or you could leverage the shock element by using shock shredders on a shredder gauntlet. You can grab the Thunderbolt shredder gauntlet for free by looting a chest on the ship in Legacy's Landfall. But to get the best shock shredders, you'll need to finish all the relic ruins to get the Ancestor's Return from Stemmer in Hidden Ember. Shredders can be very strong when used correctly, and you can check out my Shredder Gauntlet Masterclass to learn more about that. Another legendary you can easily get is the Wings of the Ten Blast Sling, which is a reward for bringing all 12 black boxes to the collector in the Memorial Grove. I'm hoping the knockdown mechanics of Blast Slings get fixed with the DLC patch, in which case, Blast Slings will likely become very useful. The Legacy's Reach Blast Sling is also a solid option to pick up if you're planning to do New Game Plus. Many players also like using spike throwers to deal damage, so I would consider doing the Way Home side quest to get the Sky Killer or picking up Defiance in New Game Plus. Personally, I actually prefer using spike throwers for drill spikes, as they're great for triggering knockdowns. The Blue Spinthorn actually has the highest possible knockdown power, at least for now. Let's keep our fingers crossed for some new legendary drill spikes, but for now, you can get the Spinthorn by completing the Signal Spike quest. The Vindicator also has great drill spikes, and some solid explosive ones. To get it, you need to do the Reinforced Component Salvage Contract for Danner in the Rain Trace. One of the most useful coils in the game is the 15% Concentration Coil, which is looted from the Scorcher in the What Was Lost side quest with Catalo. This isn't bugged anymore, so you don't have to loot the Scorcher super fast like you used to. Unfortunately, you can only get one copy of this coil on each playthrough, but the Arena exploit will let you duplicate it to get more. In fact, the exploit will allow you to duplicate any item as many times as you want, except for outfits and weapons. As you can imagine, this is super broken, because you can get tons of copies of coils and resources for upgrading gear, plus you can sell extra copies for millions of shards. I expect this is going to get patched with the DLC update, so if you want to take advantage of it, now might be your last chance. I have a whole video that shows how to do the exploit, and as long as we're still on patch 1.18, which is the current patch, it still works. The arena exploit also allows you to get some special items you can't get anywhere else, like the 25% critical hit damage coil. You can also get the Regala's Wrath Sharp Shot Bow this way from the Dreaded Encounter Challenge. So if you didn't get that because of how you chose to deal with Regala in the main quest, then you can get it now without having to do another playthrough. Regala's Wrath has even better strike through and advanced precision arrows than the Delta, so it's a really nice bow to have, especially if you're not planning to do New Game Plus to get Eribs. Duplicating upgrade resources is another great use for the exploit, as it can really be a grind to upgrade your gear. 
Just make sure you have at least one copy of all the items you need for upgrades and then duplicate it a few times to get all you need. If you don't want to use the arena exploit because it feels like too much of a cheat, that's totally understandable. In that case, you'll want to consider farming important upgrade resources like hearts and circulators by hunting machines the normal way. You'll also want to stockpile some shards. The easiest way to do that, short of the exploits, is to head to a beach and farm up lots of animal parts. These are super easy to hunt and you can use a cheap ammo like regular hunter arrows on something like the sun touched or sun shot hunter bow. This is also a decent way to get a little aim practice in. If you'd prefer to hunt machines, I recommend taking down apex tremor tusks with shock shredders. As they're weak to shock, shredder ammo is very resource efficient, and the four tusks plus the heart are worth 619 shards. Plus, you'll get a bunch of other useful resources if you tear off and loot all four ammo drums, like blast paste, metal bones, and piercing spikes. You'll get a bit of volatile sludge too, which you need for crafting advanced ammo, but the better way to farm that is by killing apex spike snouts. Just freeze them and body them with some regular precision arrows to conserve resources. I recommend you stockpile at least 300 each of blast paste, metal bones, piercing spikes, and volatile sludge. I think it's reasonable to expect that purchasing and upgrading new gear will require parts from new machines. So no matter how much farming we do, we probably won't be able to max out new gear right away. As my friend Jerry pointed out on Discord, items could even require unique upgrade resources like blue gleam in the frozen wilds. Something like obsidian would make a lot of sense given the volcano volcanic activity in the burning shores. However, I'm sure parts like apex hearts and circulators from existing machines will still get used for some upgrades, so you'll want to hang on to those. Some of the current parts don't get used for any upgrades, but I'd hang on to those especially because there's a good chance they'll be given a purpose in the burning shores. Alright, it's time to reveal the new detail that's been uncovered. In Gorilla's recent how to prepare video, at the 50 second mark, they have a shot of the weapon wheel open. As you guys know, when you open the weapon wheel, it shows your currently equipped Valor Surge. And in this shot, we can see the equipped Valor Surge is called Minefield, which doesn't currently exist. So, this confirms the existence of new Valor Surges. And remember, to unlock Valor Surges, you have to unlock skills around them. So this basically confirms that we'll be getting a bunch of other new skills too. Big shout out to Antonio Benavides, who pointed this out on one of my recent streams. Now, Minefield sounds a lot like a Trapper Valor Surge, and if we're expanding the Trapper branch, I have to imagine we're going to expand at least some of the other branches too. My initial thought was that we'll probably see expansions to the Warrior, Trapper, Infiltrator, and Machine Master branches as they each have nice blank areas to expand into. I wouldn't be surprised if Hunter and Survivor remain unchanged, or perhaps only get a few additional passive skills since these branches are already the largest and probably the most utilized. Although they could certainly be expanded as well, as my friend Arg showed in this mockup. I think the Infiltrator branch gets utilized a decent amount too but Warrior, Trapper, and Machine Master definitely get less love. As I hinted at earlier, I think we could see enhancements to Sunwing combat through an expansion of the Machine Master branch, such as being able to fire weapons while flying and perhaps even use the Sunwing's plasma cannons. Expanding the Warrior branch could potentially bring the enhancements to melee combat many players have wanted for a long time. Personally, I think it would make a lot of sense if we get access to a fully functional shield wing that actually functions as a shield like all the Rebel Champions have. Why Aloy hasn't simply picked one of these up to replace her broken one has always baffled me, unless it was simply because Gorilla hadn't finalized melee combat mechanics before releasing the base game. I think it would be really cool if the shield wing could be used to parry attacks from small machines and human enemies, like in God of War and in many other games, and perhaps it could have limited capability to block attacks from larger machines, degrading from repeated hits just as it does when you hit rebel champions. We know the Trapper branch is likely getting this new minefield valor surge, which might function similarly to the Scorcher or Stalker's Mine Launchers. I could also see skills being added to this branch to enhance the usefulness of food, as that's definitely an underutilized mechanic. Perhaps the Infiltrator branch could gain skills that enhance underwater combat, since the Burning Shores is clearly an archipelago that will surely require some underwater exploration where we could encounter new aquatic machines. As for new weapon techniques, I checked through the icons shown in the trailer, and there aren't any new ones shown, but they could certainly be scrolled to off screen, and with new Valor Surges and skills essentially confirmed, Confirmed, I'd say there's a solid chance we'll be seeing some new weapon techniques too. The confirmation of new skills also brings up the possibility of skill points being reset. If you've played even a single New Game Plus run, then you've got plenty of extra skill points hanging around. I don't think it would make sense to be able to unlock all the new skills immediately, so I wouldn't be surprised if our skill points are reset to zero when starting the Burning Shores, or perhaps new skills will be locked behind quest progression. Alright guys, that's everything I know about and all my tips to prepare for the Burning Shores. If you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, or learned something new, leaving a like would be much appreciated. 
definitely leave your thoughts on the Burning Shores in a comment down below, and if you want to chat more about it, the best place is my Discord server linked in the description, or keep an eye out for my live streams where I'm working my way back to 100% completion on Ultra Heart. We also have channel memberships active now, so for just $1 per month, you'll get a badge next to your name in YouTube comments and live stream chat, the ability to use some cool custom emoji, and access to an exclusive channel on Discord. If you want to do the arena exploit before it's no longer possible, you can check out that video here, and I'll also link my ultra hard prep video that has a bunch of tips that will be helpful in preparing for Burning Shores regardless of what difficulty you play on. Other videos I mentioned will be linked down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.